last night listening to Ticket TV for the first time. And yes, <laughs> to those of you who have asked the question in the comments if I really still play ball, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> in fact, my skill set has improved drastically now that I can put my hand completely under the ball and just call it uh, advanced skill dribbling like they do nowadays. But anyway, back to Ticket TV. It was the first time I listened, and he had listened to LeBron and JJ's first podcast. Uh, you know, God bless any of you who can suffer through that shit. I, I'm not going to listen to it uh, at all. But he pointed out a couple of things. I'm not going to spend time on this first thing except to say that it's as expected. They did not touch the topic of the steroid allegations, but who really thought that they would? Uh, what I commend Ticket TV for saying is that, you know, LeBron, you know, was lifting Curry up, I guess, as being a game changer with the three-point shooting. And he said, no, that's not when it happened. And he talked about, correctly, the history of the game changing. Now, a year ago or so, I don't know, I'm so old, years blend together, I did a video on here in which I mentioned the book Spaced Out that talks about the t tactical evolution of the game and the actual origins of changing to three-point shooting. You know, they, they sort of talk about it as it being as simple as, hey, there's a chance you'll miss a two-point shot. There's a chance you'll miss a three-point shot. You might as well be shooting three-pointers. It mentions Don Nelson. It mentions Mike D'Antoni and the Phoenix Suns. It moves on to talk about Mike D'Antoni's uh, Rockets. And as Ticket TV correctly pointed out, it was just the fact that Curry hit so many that made people not be able to ignore what was happening. Something else in that book was inadvertently referred to by, I don't know, was it Sports and Fitness Rants? Maybe it was Uncommon. I think it was Sports and Fitness. Defending some narrative that uh, the old guys sucked because look what today's players can do, you know, all the people that can shoot the three-pointer. Well, there were specialists. You know, the, the three-pointer just wasn't something that was embraced. In fact, purists of the time thought it was sacrilegious to even introduce the three-point shot to the NBA. My feelings about whether basketball is better or worse or it should be played one way or another way is irrelevant. I'm just reading history. Um, I'm just going to say that things change. When you're used to certain things, new things tend to be hard for people to accept and Basketball purists at the time didn't really like it. Anyway, point I was getting at is this switch from having specialists to everyone being a generalist. And Mike D'Antoni is mentioned in this book as being one of those people who didn't just want his specialists like Steve Nash shooting the three ball. He wanted everybody to be able to shoot the three ball. So if you want to point at a time when this change took place, that's a pretty good time to look at. So does that make today's players better that they were taught to practice the three point shot more? You know, I, I would point out that most of today's players look scared to death of the mid range. <laughs> So I guess it's all about what you practice. It's easy to forget teams that didn't win at all. So let me uh, take you down memory lane really quick. Do you remember that in the 2005 Western Conference Finals, Phoenix faced San Antonio, who went on to win the championship? In 2006, Phoenix had to go through the Lakers, had to go through the Clippers, had to go through Dallas, Dallas, who went on to face Miami in the finals. They made the conference semifinals the next year. And then that was pretty much the end. But that isn't nothing. 
And now I'm going to talk about accountability, which is something that comes up a lot on my channel and similar channels. A lot of people said that Steph Curry and the Warriors ruined basketball with the three-point game. Well, you can no longer point at them, but that's not really why I'm bringing it up. I bring up accountability in that people always have a choice. You are not forced to do what other people do. If the Warriors ruined the game with the three-point game, then why are people simultaneously using that as a reference point that today's athletes are better? Better athletes ruined the game? But isn't it also possible for a coach to mastermind a way to take the three-point shot out of the game? Unfortunately, we do sort of have an example of that. They're not taking the three-point shot out of the game, but LeBron's teams go to the free throw line so often that the number of free throws they shoot actually offset the three-pointers shot by the other team. Again, <laughs> that's cheating the game. I mean, people have choices. If you can't overcome the advantage of the three-point shot, if the only way to compete is for everyone to shoot three-point shots because the point total is, of course, going to be higher, then that simply means that the Warriors were the first ones to adopt what everyone should have been doing. But there I am mentioning the Warriors again because it's so popular to pinpoint this on them when they weren't even the ones who actually started this. And again, if we're going to condemn people adopting that one shot is worth more points than another shot, then the three-point shot should never have been introduced to the game. I mean, the argument, the justification for shooting the three is pretty compelling. It's worth more points. <laughs> so, of course, you should be shooting the shot that's worth more points. But if shooting that shot has ruined the game, then that would mean that those basketball purists, the old get off my lawn guys that said this was bad for the game, were actually right. I guess to put this into perspective, some people also try to justify flopping as, oh, well, you know, if it's going to get you the call, then why not do it? Well, here's the difference. The three-point shot is not illegal. Flopping is illegal. That's why there's a technical foul. <laughs> so one of them is cheating the game. One of them is embracing a rule and using it to their advantage. I saw some Brontard comment on a video I posted. It's called LeBron's midair flop makes me want to die. And it's, you know, it's one of the worst things ever. No one's near him and he just flails around in the air like someone hit him with an invisible baseball bat and the refs blow the whistle and he has the nerve to flex afterward. I mean, that's LeBron James for you. And as disgusting as it is, his people will always find a way to justify it. Like if, if he ate a baby puppy in front of everyone, they would find a way to justify it. And they said, hey, if he if it gets the call, oh no, they said he got the call, didn't he? Well, this is the same guy who said he doesn't cheat the game. That is cheating. It is against the rules. You know, <laughs> referees are there to make the right call not to make the wrong call. So if referees are making the wrong call and it's helping a player, that's cheating. Next, Uncommon says that LeBron listed his three things for what makes a player great, uh, knowing the history of the game, discipline, and love of the game. What the fuck ever, dude. <laughs> People who love the game don't cheat it. I don't think people who love the game che cheat it, personally. Um, the discipline part, uh, I think Uncommon was talking about LeBron James working out and shit like that. I've done a couple episodes that I never got around to releasing. I, I am tired of hearing the announcers mention that LeBron showed up three hours early to the gymnasium before the game 
so what? Where else was he going to go? To his job? <laughs> this is his fucking job. And he looks exhausted within the first minute of the first period. So maybe you shouldn't show up so early. Maybe you still need your old man nap. And anybody who is in good shape, you know, not just shoving a needle in their ass and pumping out some weights, anyone with some cardio is not sweating like they came out of the shower after one fucking minute. The guy's cardio is crap. I don't think he's disciplined. I don't think he's in shape. I don't think he's, uh, listen, you can be muscular without being in shape. I guess that sounds dumb. You've got, you've got to separate the few. Um, you know, just like you can have people who are overweight but are extremely quick on the front line in football. The type of play in uh, basketball now is starting to resemble linemen in football. You have these short spurts where you try really hard with not that much long-term running in general. LeBron can't make it up and down the court multiple times in a row. He just can't and won't. He chooses not to, even if he can. Well, he's not proving that he can because he doesn't. I, I, I don't buy the discipline part either. Sorry. You wouldn't be a shitty free throw shooter at this stage in your career if you had discipline. You wouldn't be launching a podcast in addition to all of your other shit at this stage in your career if you had discipline. You would understand that there's a time and a place. In fact, that's a great opportunity to insert a dad story or a dad who was a disciplinarian. Because if I was on the high school basketball team and was going to launch myself a podcast while I wasn't a great free throw shooter, my dad would have shit a brick. He'd be like, how the fuck do you have time for a podcast when you can't make a free throw? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you need people to call you out on shit. Love for history of the game. I, I do think that you should have a healthy respect for the history of the game. I don't think LeBron has that. And I also don't think it would determine whether or not you're a great player. I think if you developed your skills and were coached properly, it would be very possible for you to have never heard of Magic Johnson or Oscar Robinson, or anyone else, and still be extremely good at basketball. Uh, Uncommon touched on the problems with society, and that it's, you know, okay to believe whatever you want to believe, because you're so special. Facts don't matter anymore. But uh, that's probably enough for a completely different episode. And I will manage to offend everybody on both sides with that one so i'll hold up for now all right thanks for listening to the aoh podcast